Hey, you gotta give us some more. We be working out down on the floor. We're marching one step, two step, three step more. And we want to normalize black success. We are in celebrating the 50 year anniversary of the first African American woman to sit on a corporate board. We're going to NASDAQ to ring the opening bell. This is amazing, but emotionally, you're like, that was 50 years ago, and there's still onesie twosies on corporate boards. We needed a sisterhood to help bring others of us up. Black Women on Boards had 18 members about 14 months ago, and we grew this community to over 150 members just doing no marketing. This organization was put together to make sure that women of color would be able to access doors that hadn't been fully open to us. We're not just on boards because we're black women. We are contributing members to business results. Becoming a board member is becoming a full partner in a company's journey to be successful. You come alongside them as a consultant to help them think about key decisions that they would need to make to grow their business. We help pave the way for new transformation by asking great questions. I report directly to our CEO. I sit on the executive team. I am involved in every single decision that is made at the top using an anti-racist lens. I was the seventh or the ninth black woman to raise over X million in venture funding. My company built a five member board. It was, it was the first time I really got to experience the impact of a board, not only to the company, the duty the board had to the communities in which we serve. We hire and fire CEOs, we set strategy and really answer the question, how can I help? I am a poor girl from Haiti. I came here at the age of five. In less than a generation, I would stumble upon computer science, move out to Silicon Valley, going all the way to being a former tech COO. My day job is leading four companies that I've taken public. And so if you told me this is what this would become, I would have told you not possible. It's truly my great pleasure to welcome Black Women on Boards and co-founder Merlene Santil. Over 50 years ago, Patricia Harris made history when she became the first Black female executive to serve on a public board. And today, Black Women on Board stands on her shoulders. I think she would be proud at how many women will continue her legacy. She was the first at so many things. A dean of a law school, first female in a cabinet in the succession line to be a president. Being the first means there's no expectation that you can achieve that. And once you do it, that gives everyone else a permission to do it over and over again. Thank you, Patricia, for opening the door for us. Now let's go make a history and leave a legacy for the next generation. I'm still feeling the emotions to see all these women. Every single one of us has a story and a journey. When Endeavor was looking to expand its board, Ari Emanuel said, I want a woman of color who had built a company from the ground up herself. When I was 21, my grandmother taught me how to quilt. And since then, I've sold 12 pieces. My first piece was gifted to Oprah. It's really been quite an amazing journey for me. I was born in Nigeria. I grew up with role models of black brilliance, and I expected that my race wouldn't be a hindrance. It was a rude reality in seeing that it actually was. My father was in law school at Howard University. He would take me to classes with him. I saw people who looked like me, and it was just ingrained that that was something I could do. I was raised in a small town called Hain City. I was a curious little girl, and I always wanted to know how I could make a difference. I got my first board position with IDEX Corporation. I grew up in the South in the 1970s. My parents were very active in the civil rights movement. I wanted to do something new and different. I was born in Brooklyn to a single mom. You might think that meant I wouldn't be where I am today. It starts with having a dream and not allowing anyone to take that from you. Some of our problems are based off the fact that our networks are so insular. Fortune 500 companies want to serve the world. And to be able to do that, you must have diverse perspectives at the table. When you are underestimated, you have to be hyper aware of how decisions are made, how to maneuver. Oftentimes we are over prepared because of what we've had to do in the past. I don't want being a CTO to be special as a black woman. Why isn't it equitable? Of the 150 women that we have today, 
61% are on corporate boards. It's unbelievable how much progress has been made in 18 months. What you're doing is truly God's work. I'm proud to present you with our NASDAQ opening bell Thank crystal. You so much. <laughs> And now we have something special we want to share with you this morning. Members of the new global organization, Black Women on Boards, are working to get more Black women on boards of directors. Our job is really to help the women behind us because nobody else is going to invest in us in the way we would invest in each other. When you understand this moment is about taking the baton and passing it so that it continues to grow, you move differently. I just hope we normalize success. So no one's surprised. I hope that the whole world is watching. The landscape of corporate America is changing because there is a group of black women who are changing the game. Just imagine 50 years from now, thousands will be able to say that they don't stand alone anymore. It's gonna mean progress. The future is bright for other little black and brown girls who aspire to do this. Every girl looks at that and says, if they could reach that pinnacle, I can do it. We are here and we're forced to bring others along.